Now what I've got is my existing site here and then the pad footing and you can see that because we've put the pad footing in and we've got some element of cut and fill which is what we're after that this side actually sticks up here and in fact if we look here there's some areas here we could smooth out a little bit so now I've put my landscaping hat on I just want to create a site that I can make work so that we can get it built properly what I need to do, and if you could just think of this simplistically, is I need to shove some dirt in here to smooth that out. I need to kind of smooth out that batter a little bit. I need to decide, is this going to be battered down or am I going to retain all of that? In this project, we've generally decided to retain it so we don't need to worry about that side. So this is going to be fairly simple. Now, what's important before I start is that I make this site existing. Because what we're about to do is a graded region duplicates the site topo and then we can fiddle with the new one and say more here, less there, dig this bit out. But it won't work unless we've set this to existing. In addition to that, I'm going to change the material to grass just so it's easy to see the difference between the two because otherwise they're a little bit tricky because they sit exactly over the top of each other. Okay, so that's what it looks like in 3D shaded view and that's what it looks like when we render. Now the whole site didn't change to green. You can see it's just green there because the current phasing is set to show all. If I set to show complete, it should change all of that. However, I am going to set it back to show all because show all is going to allow me to see the existing and the new topo in this particular view. We'll talk about phasing later on. So now that I've confirmed that this is set to existing, I'm going to create my graded region, which is quite easy. The tricky bit is just understanding what it's doing. I select graded region and I'm going to create it based on the perimeter points these ones here, not all of the other new ones because otherwise I've got too many to manipulate. And I select my surface and before I do anything more, like hop out of it, I want to adjust a few just so it's easy to see what's old and what's new. So I knew that the top of this pad footing was meant to be 14700, so if I place some points Um, you can see I can actually snap to it, that point, and that point. What we've done, and it's a bit tricky to see, but you can see that now I'm pulling this site up, that this site now sits flush with the top of the pad, which is exactly what I want. If I look over here, I can see that down here is a little bit lower, and I might do the same thing about there. And then I could keep going. I could keep going, just making this a little bit smoother along the edge but that's all I'm going to do so for the moment I've put a point here and here and here and here and they've all been 14 7 the exact same height as my pad so I, I generally have a, a little notepad sitting next to me and I write down the numbers that I don't want to forget big green tick the red is indicating what the site used to be and the green is indicating the new stuff so if I go to the section Let's have a look at this. Okay, so the this particular hatch is indicating the new stuff, and this particular dash red line indicates the natural ground line. Here you can see where it's been edited. And I'll change these hatch patterns later on so I can see them a bit more. So really all I want to see is this natural ground line in section. That's something that the council will often be looking for when you're setting the heights if you've got a two-story house there's always a set height limit that it's always from this natural ground level so it's important so that the builder knows what extent of cut and fill but it's also information that the council want